In this video, we talk about how to build a two-dimensional list using Python. Now, a standard 1D list or array is simply a list with one column and many rows. Each item that makes up the 1D structure creates a new row, but there is still only one column. Think about a shopping list. Every time you add an item to a shopping list, you're staying within the same column, but you're creating a new row. Now, a 2D structure implements a table. This means that it has both rows and columns. Today, we'll be working with a matrix of integers, outputting them, and then rotating the matrix to improve problem solving and understanding 2D list. Now, the first question you need to answer is, how do you read a table in programming? Well, the start index is zero, so this means row one is represented by index zero, row two is represented by index one, and so on. Now, the same is true for columns. Here's our matrix. If I'm looking at the first row, I'm looking at row zero, and our rows are indicated by the first number in our set of coordinates. So you can think of this as a map, if you will. There's both an X and Y axis. In the first row, I have row zero. In the first column, column zero. So the first item in the first row is at row zero, column zero. To get the second item in the first row, I must move over a column. This means I'm going to stay in row zero, but I'm going to move to the second column, which is represented by index one. If I want to get the third item in the first row, I'm going to stay in row zero and then move to column two. That is the represented by the third uh, column. So here's our matrix of integers here. So if I want to look at one, I'm going to be looking in row two, which, which is represented by index one, column two, which is represented by index one. So here we have our list of coordinates and they correspond to these numbers down here. Now let's switch over to Python and actually build and talk about how do we build this 2D list? Let's go ahead and do that now. When we build a 2D structure, we need to give it a name. I'm going to call mine table. Now, the first thing I need to ask myself is, okay, how many rows does the 2D structure I'm building, how many rows does it have? And we can see here that there are three rows. So I'm going to put in three sets of brackets. Each set of brackets represent a row and we separate them by a comma. Now, what we want to do is figure out how many columns we have. Well, we have three columns in each one. That means inside the first row, I'm going to put my data, seven, three, nine. So this means in the first row, row zero, column zero, I'm going to have a seven. In row zero, column one, I'm going to have my three. In row zero, column two, I'm going to have my nine. The next row, which is row two, represented by index one, I'm going to have eight one and five, and then in my final row, I'm gonna have six, two, and four, and that matches the table that I have below. The next thing I need to do is, okay, how do I output this? Anytime you're working with the 2D structure, you need a nested for loop. So we're gonna do four, and we're not gonna use i and j. A lot of people do, but that doesn't really show you what is happening. So I'm gonna call mine row, for row in range, now, I want to start at row zero, index zero, and I want to go to index two, which means I need to put a three. Remember, in the one of the previous videos, we talked about when you're using a for loop, the first number is inclusive, the second number is exclusive. Now, I, want, I need to traverse not only the rows, but I need to traverse the columns. So I'm going to do col for columns in range, and what I'm going to do, so I'm going to do zero to three again. Now. Here's what we need to do. We need to print. And what we want to do is we want to print our table. We want to print the row and we want to print the column. Now there's something that we need to add here because in Python, when you use the print command, it goes to a new line. What we want to do is not go to a new line. We want to keep the cursor on the same line, but we want to end this print statement with a space and that'll give us a space between each number. Now we do have three rows. We have row zero, row one, and row two. After it prints 739, what I need to do is I need to go to a new line. So I'll do that with a simple print command. Now, when we run this, we should see the data match up. So we run it and we can see in the first row, we have 739, the second row, 815, and in the final row, 624. When this inner loop runs, it must run three times 
the first time for index zero, the second time for index one, the third time for index two, before we move to the next row. I start at row zero, then I uh, go to column zero, that outputs the seven. I'm still inside this inner loop, so row stays at zero, but column is incremented to one. What's at row zero? Column one, that's gonna be my three, and it continues on and on and on until it's printed. Now let's talk about, okay, how do we problem solve so we can rotate this 90 degrees to the right, and then rotate 90 degrees to the left, so it outputs in a different setup using what we already have. Let's talk about that right now. Now let's problem solve and implement our 2D list that we made. So we have 739815624. This matches what we had in Python. What we wanna do is we wanna rotate this 90 degrees so it looks like this, where 687 is in the first row, 213 is in the second row, and in the final row, there's 459. Now we should not have to go back into our table uh, list that we have and start rearranging numbers. What we should be able to do is take our existing structure that we have and manipulate it in such a way that it rotates 90 degrees uh, to the right. So the first number I have is six. That's what I'm looking for. I need to find six where it was originally. Well, here's our six. It's in row two, column zero. I know that's where I'm starting. What I need to do now is take a look at the next number. Well, the next number is eight. I can see eight is right here. That is the second number I need to print. Where was eight originally? Well, it was in row one, column zero. So I know I've changed rows, but I've stayed in the same column. Now what I'm gonna do is take a look at the final number. My final number in the first row is seven after I've rotated it. Where is it at over here? It's right there. That's where it was, which means I'm gonna be in row zero, column zero. By looking just at this first row, 687, and comparing to where it was originally, I now have a starting point and I can see the pattern that's starting to emerge. I can see that, okay, I'm going up. 687 is the first row. If I go 213, that'll be the second row. 459, that'll be the third row. Now, the question I need to ask myself, does our column or do our rows change more often? Well, in our first pattern that we found, the, ro the rows are changing, not the columns. And I need to know that my rows are changing more time than the columns. If I go through all of these, I can see that my rows are gonna change nine times while my columns are only gonna change three times. So what does this mean for our outer loop? Remember, the outer loop is gonna run less times than your inner loop. Because while you're inside the outer loop, when you go inside to the inner loop, the inner loop has to run through its total it amount of iterations before the outer loop can actually increment. Because I know our columns change less often, I know our columns are gonna be in the outer loop and our rows are gonna be in the inner loop. So now, the next thing, do our rows, which is gonna be our inner loop, do they increment or do they decrement? Well, I started at row two, which is, or row, the third row, which is index two, and that is where my six was. Then I moved to row one, then I moved to row zero. So I know that it's going down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip over to Python, we're gonna write a nested for loop that implements exactly what we just saw in our problem solving. So I've added a couple uh, print statements. Here it is after being rotated. That way when we output it, we're not just looking at a total set of numbers. We can see where it should be after it has rotated. And then I put in a print statement, which will kick it to the next line so we can get some uh, spacing there. So I know my, my outer loop needs to deal with the column. So I'm gonna do for col, and I'm gonna do in range. Now, I know I wanna start at zero, and I wanna get all the way to column two, which means not a two, but a three goes there because that second number is exclusive. Then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do for row in range. Now, where do I want to start? Well, I wanna start at row two. I wanna go to row zero. But remember that I'm, that's exclusive, so I'm gonna put negative one, because if I put zero, it's only gonna go to row one. Now, because I put two, negative one, I need to put a step counter, and I wanna decrement, which means decrease by one. So that will allow me to do that. We're gonna put our colon. Now, all we need to do now is we're gonna print 
And what we're going to do is we're going to do table. And what we need to output first is the row followed by the column. So I want to output the row, which is row two, column zero, then row one, column zero, then row zero, column zero. That's what I want to do. And then column will uh, increment. Now, remember, we're going to need this end. We want to keep the cursor uh, where it was. So we need to uh, put that there. I need to get rid of this parentheses. There we go. And uh, that should do it. So let's run it. We can see our original number and it didn't work. And that's because we forgot to kick it to a new line outside the inner loop. So we run it again. It's still doing that. Oh, because we didn't even write print correctly. All right, last time, here we go. Third time's a charm. There we go. So we had 739-815-624. When we rotate it, it should come out to 687. It does. Followed by the next row, 213. It does. Followed by 459. And it does. So now it's been rotated to the right. If you would like, Try to rotate it to the left. We're going to start with our original table. And what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it to the left so it looks completely different. If you'd like to give that a shot, go ahead and pause the video. And in a moment, we'll go ahead and we'll go over the solution. So here's the solution to take our starting 2D structure and rotate it 90 degrees to the left. Now, uh, here's a tip for you, especially those of you taking uh, paper four in uh, Cambridge. Uh, they like to ask 2D array questions. You may even see this on paper two where you have to write a pseudocode. Do not try to do things in your head. That that's, makes it more complicated than it needs to be. You can make simple mistakes doing that. Uh, what you can do is you can draw it out or you can even type it out. So here is my starting 2D structure, 739815624. When I rotate it 90 degrees to the left, I see that 954 will be in the first row. Well, that means 954. My rows are changing. They are incrementing. While my column is starting at two, and as I move to the left, it'll be decrementing. And because my rows change more than my columns, I now know I can set up the correct for loop. So I'm going to do four col, which is four columns. I'm going to do in range. I'm going to start at column two. I want to get to column zero, which means I need to do negative one, and I'm going to step negative one. That means I'm going to go to two, then one, then zero. Then I'm going to do my uh, rows. I'm going to do four row in range and I'm going to do zero, three, because I'm starting at, if I look here at nine, five, four, I'm starting in row zero, then I'm going to row one, then row two, all while I am still in column two. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to print, I'm going to print my table. And remember, I'm going to do row because I need that to change, followed by the column. And then to put a space in between these, we're going to do end equals, and we put a space there. Now, what I don't want to forget this time is to print. That is the solution. There's only one thing left to do. Let's run it and make sure it comes out to 954-312-786, and it does. Hope you guys found this video helpful on 2D list and nested for loops. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow, and we'll see you guys in the next programming video.